Welcome to TL Yarn Crafts TV. I'm Tony, your host, and I'm excited to share my brand new pattern, the Summertime Tea. I absolutely love this project. It is insanely easy. On today's video, I'm gonna walk you through all of the steps and techniques that I took to make this lovely garment. It's just a joy to make. I use a really fun stitch called the Extended Single Crochet, and it comes out with a fabric that is just beyond amazing. Before we jump into the pattern, I wanted to tell you a bit about what you can expect from this video. I will not be doing a full step-by-step -step tutorial. Instead, I'm going to be covering most of the techniques that you'll want to know, and then you can visit toycblog.com to get more details about measurements and dimensions and all kinds of stuff like that. So as far as this tee, here's what we'll be covering today. We're gonna start with this ribbed brim here at the bottom, and then there's a setup row of single crochet stitches. We then move on to the body of the fabric, move up to where we add the sleeves, do a little bit of neck shaping, we'll make the second panel, then we'll do some seaming, we'll finish up the neckline, and then there's a little bit of work to be done on the sleeve. For this pattern, I use one of my new favorite yarns. This is Jeans Yarn, available from Lion Brand. I picked this up at my local Joann's. Special thanks to Joann's for sponsoring this project and providing yarn support. For the actual color, I use Jeans Colors, and the color is called Khaki. This color, which I absolutely love and probably will make my next summertime tea from, is called Classic. For the sake of this tutorial, I'll actually be using a yarn called Urban that I found at at Michael's. I think this is gonna pop up a little bit better on camera, so this is what I'm gonna use for my sample today. In addition to the yarn, you're going to need a couple hooks. You're gonna need a six millimeter crochet hook, a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need some stitch markers, a darning needle, tape measure, and scissors. All right, we are ready to get started. While watching this video, I strongly encourage you to pull up the summertime tea pattern on tlycblog.com or purchase the print-friendly version from tlyarncrafts.com and follow along with this video. So we're going to start off with a slip knot, however you like to make it, and we're going to pick up our six millimeter crochet hook, insert that and tighten down the slip knot. So to start, I am going to chain six, and we are going to get into the ribbing that's at the bottom of the T. So that's three, four, five, and six. What we're going to do is work single crochet stitches along this chain. So we're gonna skip the first chain and work a single crochet in the five remaining chains. So insert your hook into the chain, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both loops on the hook. Insert your hook into the chain, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both loops. So at the end of this, you should have five chains if you're following along the way that I'm doing it. But again, make sure you get the dimensions and get all of those numbers from tlycblog.com so you actually make a full size shirt. We are making a ribbing that is going to expand the width of our shirt. So what we're gonna wanna do next is chain one, turn our work and work in the back loop across this set of single crochet stitches. So this is the front loop. We're working only into the back loop. So insert your hook through the back loop only, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both loops on hook. And we're gonna go into the next stitch, back loop only, and to all five stitches on the row. And we're gonna continue this, kind of chain one, turn, single crochet in the back loop across the row until you reach the width that you need. In the pattern, it tells you the width that you need for your size, but either way, whatever width you go with, you're gonna wanna end with an odd number of stitches. And the reason you'll do that is because it will set you up for the right number of stitches to work the body of your project. So I'm gonna continue along to the width that I need for this tutorial, and you should continue to the width you need for your actual shirt and I will be right back. 
So this is as far as I want to go on the sample that I'm going to make today, but again, you can find full details of the pattern on tlycblog.com and figure out how wide you need to make your beginning ribbing. So I'm going to, I've just got a couple last stitches here, and then we're going to move on to the setup row for the body of our project. So now we are going to drop out the six millimeter hook and we are going to grab a six and a half millimeter hook, insert that into the loop, pull that nice and taut, and we're going to chain one. Now we are going to work into the row ends of the project because now instead of working in this direction, we're gonna start working in this direction. So we are going to put one single crochet in the end of each row. So here's how you find the row ends. This first row, we're going to insert our hook right here, right in this open space. And we're gonna do a single crochet as normal. There are two rows here to insert. So we're gonna put our first stitch here in this space and our next stitch in kind of that more open hole right next to it. And we're gonna continue that all the way down. By the end of this, we should have the same number of single crochet stitches as the number of rows that we started with. So right now I have three. That's four, five, six, seven, eight. Continue on down the row. And I'll meet you at the end. So here I am at the end, I only have a couple more stitches left. And here goes my last one. So at this point, I would encourage you to take a second, count all of your single crochets here and make sure you have the same number of single crochet stitches as you did your rows. And you should end with an odd number. We need to have an odd number to make sure this stitch count is correct. So now, I got a little ahead of myself here. So I just finished my single crochet stitches and I'm going to chain three because now we're gonna get into the actual pattern stitch. We're gonna turn our work and we're gonna begin working extended single crochet stitches. So this is a variation on a single crochet that makes it a little bit taller. Um, not quite as tall as a half double crochet, but of course not as short as a single crochet. So we started with our chain three. This counts as an extended half double crochet plus a chain one, and that's throughout the pattern. So since this counts as a stitch, we're going to skip this first stitch right below our chain, we're also gonna skip the stitch next to it because the chain one at the top counts as a stitch, so we're going to skip the first two stitches of this row. And we're gonna work an extended single crochet into this stitch here. So the way you do that is you insert your hook, pull up a loop, you'll have two loops on your hook, you're gonna yarn over and pull through just one loop. And then you're gonna yarn over again and pull through both loops. And that is your extended single crochet. And as this continues to work up, you are going to be amazed at the fabric it creates. It is so pretty. All right, and now we're gonna chain one. We're gonna skip a stitch and work an extended single crochet into the next stitch. So again, insert your hook, pull up a loop. We have two loops on our hook. We're going to pull through one loop, yarn over and pull through both loops. Follow that with a chain one. Again, skip a stitch extended single crochet in the next stitch. Insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through both. Chain one, and we're gonna continue that down the row. So skip one, extended single crochet in the next, chain one, and keep going. I'll meet you at the end. Hey babes, Tony here. I hope you're enjoying this tutorial for the summertime tea. If so, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel for more patterns, tutorials, and product reviews. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook for current projects and pattern releases. Let's get back to it. All right, so I'm now towards the end of my row. I just have a few more extended single crochet stitches to make. So I'm gonna chain one, and when you reach your last stitch, you're gonna work an extended single crochet into it. Now, moving on to next rows, we're going to start with a chain three. 
that counts as our first extended single crochet and a chain stitch. We're gonna turn, we're gonna skip the extended single crochet that's right here at the base of the chain, and we're gonna work our next stitch into the next extended single crochet. Now, if you're having trouble figuring out where to insert your hook, I'm going to let you know right now. You're gonna put your hook right here into the extended single crochet space. And I'll show you what that looks like. You're gonna insert your hook. So this is the stitch. This is the actual stitch right here. This is the long post of the stitch. And then this is the two loops above it. And you're gonna insert your hook right below those two loops into kind of that hole right there. It kind of looks like a V stitch in that space, if that makes it an easier way for you to remember where you're inserting your hook. So you're just gonna insert your hook, pull up a loop, and work your extended single crochet as normal. You're gonna chain one, skip the chain one space, and insert your hook again between what looks like that V stitch there. And chain one. And you're gonna continue that across the row. And that's how all the rows for the body are worked. You start with a chain three, and then you're going to do an extended single crochet into each extended single crochet across and you're going to split them with a chain stitch. So I just did a chain one. I'm gonna insert into the extended single crochet and make an extended single crochet and then chain one. So those chain one stitches create like a mesh pattern, which gives the summertime tee its airiness, its lightness, and also makes it go really, really fast. This project works up so quickly. So continue on down the line doing a chain one and then working an extended single crochet into each extended single crochet across the row. So I'm getting towards the end here and I'm gonna show you what we're going to do for the last stitch of the row. So we have our turning chain, which is a chain three. We're gonna work our last extended single crochet of the row into the second chain of the turning chain. So we're gonna insert our hook, pull up a loop, and work the extended single crochet as normal. Then we're going to chain three, turn, and continue that on. So you're gonna continue until the body is the length that you need it to be. Again, you can find all the dimensions for the size that you need on tlycblog.com, and you can also print out a version from tlyarncrafts.com for a small fee. And I'm going to continue working up the body of my pattern, and I will meet you here when it's time to work the sleeves. I've now made it to the kind of height that I need for the body of my top. Um, like I said, I'm making a super mini version, but um, once you get to the point where you're ready to start work this, working the sleeves, you can kind of pick up with me from here. Now, at this point, the pattern tells you to foundation single crochet four inches. That will give you the length of your sleeves. Now the shirt itself has quite a bit of ease, meaning that it's gonna be significantly wider than your body. So four inches of sleeve is not necessarily super short. So just kind of, again, reference the pattern and decide if you want to make your sleeves longer or shorter. I think four inches, regardless of size, is pretty comfortable for a short sleeve top. So I'm gonna show you how I recommend that you make the sleeves so you don't have to do any additional seaming or anything like that. So once you've finished the last row of the body of your shirt, we're going to do our foundation single crochet stitches. So what I'm going to do is work the beginning of my foundation single crochet stitch actually into the post of the extended single crochet that I just made. I'm going to insert my hook into the post of this stitch and there's no really comfortable way to do that. You just kind of got to get your hook in there. Okay, so I'm just working under kind of one loop of the post here. I'm going to yarn over, pull up a loop yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, and pull through two. So that is my first foundation stitch made. Now I'm going to continue making foundation single crochet stitches until I have four inches. So for my sample, I'm going a little bit shorter, but you'll wanna continue making foundation stitches until you have four inches. So here's how you keep going. You're gonna insert your hook under these two loops these two loops. It might be a little tough to see here, but I'm going to try my best. 
<laughs> so you're going to insert your hook under those two loops. There we go. And I also have a video on how to make foundation, single crochet, half double and double crochets if you have any questions on that. But you'll wanna insert your hook under the two loops in the bottom of the foundation that you're making. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. So that's our second stitch. Again, you're gonna insert your hook under the two loops here at the bottom of your foundation. Give it a little coaxing if you need to. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through one. And yarn over, pull through both. Let's do that one more time together. Insert your hook under both loops underneath your chain, I mean underneath your foundation. Come on. There it is. <laughs> It can be a little fiddly. Foundation stitches are totally worth it, but you have to get used to them. You're going to yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. For my sample, I'm making 10 foundation stitches, but you can do as many as you need to. Again, I encourage you to go for four inches, but this project is so versatile. You can make longer sleeves, shorter sleeves, no sleeves, whatever feels good to you. Okay, so I've made the 10 foundation single crochet stitches that I want. I'm going to now drop my project because I want to make a set of foundation single crochet stitches that will go on this side of the project. And the way I'm going to do that, and just kind of bear with me, watch me for a second before you start to do it yourself, I'm actually going to pull yarn from the opposite end of the ball that I'm working on. So this is the length of yarn that's going into the middle of the ball here and that's attached to my project. I'm actually going to pull the other end of this yarn. Let me get this out the way so it's not confusing. I'm going to pull the other end of this yarn and I'm going to work the same number of foundation single crochet stitches as I did on this side of my project. So the way that you do that, and again I've referenced that video below, that tutorial, we're going to make a slip knot with the same hook, tighten down that slip knot. We're going to chain two and we're going to insert our hook into the first chain we made. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through one. Yarn over and pull through two. So that's our first foundation single crochet made. Next, we're gonna insert our hook under the two loops at the bottom of the foundation, just like we did before. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. And we're gonna continue that and make the same number of foundation single crochet stitches as we did for the first side of our project. All right, so I just made my last foundation single crochet stitch. I'm going to cut this yarn off the ball. I'm gonna pull this loop up and kind of set this to the side for now. So we're going to get back to our project where we were before still with our six and a half millimeter hook. Next, we are going to chain three and we're gonna return to working in our pattern stitch. So we're gonna turn our work and working down our foundation row, we're going to skip the first two stitches. So these are our chains. This is our first stitch. This is our second stitch. Remember we skip these two because our chain counts as a foundation extended single crochet as well as a chain stitch. So we'll skip two stitches and we'll work our next extended single crochet into the third foundation single crochet. And then chain one, we'll skip one and work into the next. Chain one, skip one, work into the next. Chain one, skip one, work into the next. Now we've reached the end of our foundation. This is our, this was the first foundation single crochet stitch that we made and this is actually our extended single crochet from the body of the project. So we're going to skip this one because it counts as our chain stitch and we're going to work 
now going into the body and working into the extended single crochet stitches as we've been doing before. And that's how we attach a sleeve without having to do any seaming. And we're going to continue this until we get to the other side of the row and I will meet you down there. Okay, so we are reaching the other side of the body. I just have a couple more stitches here. And before we put on the next sleeve, again, we're at our turning chain. We're gonna work an extended single crochet into the second chain of the turning chain and complete that stitch. Now we're going to chain one. We're gonna pick up that foundation that we detached before, and we're gonna start working across this foundation set of stitches. The way we're gonna do that is, I encourage you to just kind of hold it down with your thumb. We're gonna skip the first foundation single crochet because that counts as our chain here, and we're gonna work into the second foundation single crochet, and we're gonna do an extended single crochet there. Chain one, skip one, and work an extended single crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip one and work that across this set of foundation stitches. Until we get to the last stitch where we're gonna work an extended single crochet. We're gonna chain three, just like we have been, and we're gonna turn our work. So as you can see here, what we've got is our two sleeves that we've worked seamlessly onto our project. So this side is completely secure because that's where we did the single cro the foundation single crochets without um, detaching from the project. And on this side, when you get to that point, you'll just want to sew this end into your project so that it lines up, just like that. And then you won't even be able to tell. Look, you can barely tell right now. <laughs> so you're just gonna continue along the project of course, on toycblog.com, it lets you know exactly how many more rows you'll want to do here to, to add your sleeves. I'm gonna do the number of rows that I want to do for this sample, and I'll meet you for the next shaping. Once you've completed all of your rows for your arm, we're gonna do a little bit of neck shaping. Now, if you've never done that before, don't be intimidated. This is the most basic neck shaping you'll ever work. I just wanted to create something that was a bit more of a scoop neck um, since this is a summertime tee and I want you to be comfortable wearing it. So in the pattern, it encourages you to use stitch markers to mark two places that will ultimately be either end of the neck. Now. The stitch that you mark is going to depend on what size that you're making. So again, reference the free pattern that's available on tlycblog.com. I'm gonna place my stitch markers really quickly. Okay, so for my sample, this is where my neck opening is going to be. So another thing to note is that this is now the right side of your work and this is the wrong side. And it references that in the pattern as well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to chain three and I'm going to work in the pattern stitch just to this stitch marker, stitch marker and also into this stitch. So again, I'm going to skip the first stitch because that uh, chain three counts as a foundation and I'm gonna work in the extended single crochet, chain one, all the way to my marker. So when you get to your marker, you'll still wanna make your chain one, you'll wanna drop your marker out of that stitch and work an extended single crochet into that stitch as well. Now we're going to chain three and we're going to turn our work here, working now on the wrong side. And we are going to continue in the pattern stitch until we reach the outside edge of the sleeve here.
and then we are going to, we're not gonna do a chain at the very end. We are actually going to cut our yarn, leaving a nice long length of yarn because we're gonna use that to sew up the shoulder here. So I usually will um, do a length of yarn that is three times the length that I'll need plus a little bit more and that gives me enough. So we're gonna just pull this loop up. We're going to now turn back to the right side of our work and we are going to be starting here at this stitch marker. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna drop the stitch marker out of this stitch, put that to the side. I'm gonna insert my hook into that extended single crochet, grab my yarn, and I'm gonna pull up a loop in that stitch. And now I'm going to chain three, which will count as an extended single crochet and a chain one and I'm going to work the pattern stitch along to the outside edge. And again we're at our turning chain working an extended single crochet into the second chain of the turning chain and then we're going to chain three. We're going to turn our work and then we're gonna work in the pattern stitch back to um, kind of this chain three that we started here in the marked stitch. So the same extended single crochet chain one sequence that we've been doing throughout the pattern. We're gonna continue that for the basic neck shaping we're doing here. and we're gonna work our last extended single crochet in the second chain of this turning chain here. All right, and again, we're going to leave ourselves a nice long tail, which we'll use to sew in the sleeves. So at this point, we now have what's considered the front panel of our project. We, of course, have lots of ends to weave in, but we don't need to worry about that right now. What we'll want to do next is make the back panel. And the back panel looks exactly like the front panel, except you're going to add a few inches to the body because this project has little hip slits on the side and the front is a little bit shorter than the back. So I'm going to go ahead and make my back panel. I'm going to do it in a contrasting color so when it's time to do a little bit of seaming you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So go ahead and pause this video, make your back panel and I will meet you here when we're ready to do some seaming. I am all done with what is going to be my back panel. So what I want to do next is prepare to seam up the shoulders. So I've matched up the right sides of my project are facing here and we're going to do a mattress stitch to seam the shoulders and also the side of our project. I always go for a mattress stitch because I think is it is nice and flat. Uh, it is very, very easy. It's a very um, visually interesting way to seam. It doesn't give you like extra loops like a whip stitch does. It doesn't, doesn't give you um, extra crochet stitches like a single crochet would do. So what we're going to do here is I'm just gonna hold these together. Everybody does their mattress stitching a little bit different and that's fine, but I'm going to be stitching together my shoulder seams here. So what I want to do since this yarn is already attached is I am going to put my yarn onto my darning needle and I'm going to go under the two loops of the extended single crochet on this side. And then I'm going to go back through the two loops of the extended single crochet on my front panel here. And pull those nice and taut. And now I'm going to just alternate stitch by stitch on each side. So now I'm going through a chain stitch in the back and a chain stitch on the front. Now into an extended single crochet in the back and an extended single crochet on the front. And I'm gonna pull the yarn taut every few stitches. Don't pull it too tight because then you're gonna have some kind of weird gathering going on. But again, like I said, this stitch, the mattress stitch is I think the absolute best way to seam your projects.
Now, obviously I'm working with two contrasting colors so you can get a better feel for what I'm doing here, but you're gonna be working with a length of yarn that's the same color as your shirt and your two panels are gonna be the same colors as well. So we're just gonna continue this all the way through the shoulder of our project. And when we get to the end, we're going to weave in this end and go to the other sleeve and do the same thing. Now our shoulder seams are complete and we've worked up to the neckline, so we have a pretty obvious neckline here. Next, we're going to want to work down the sides with our mattress stitch seam. Before we do that, I strongly, strongly encourage you to grab a couple stitch markers and evenly distribute them down the sides of your project. To make the hip slits on the end, I suggest that you don't seam any further than the single crochet setup row on your front panel because that'll leave an opening right here on the side of your shirt. So I'm going to put a stitch marker right here. This is not an exact science. You can count down the rows if you want to. I am not that patient, so I'm not going to, but you certainly could just to make sure your sides are going to be even. I just like to kind of lay them out next to each other and that feels right to me. <laughs> um, I'm also going to put a couple stitch markers um, right at the underarm here because I find that sometimes when I make it to that spot, um, my stitches are off. So I'm just gonna put a quick marker there so I know that as I mattress stitch down that as long as my underarms are even, my sides and my sleeves will most likely be even. So I'm going to grab a length of the yarn that we use for the first side and I'm going to start in this corner. I'm gonna work into the underarm and down to this stitch marker here. And then I'm going to attach yarn to this corner, work into the underarm and down to the stitch marker here. And we're just gonna continue in the mattress stitch as we did before. And then once you are done with that, meet me back here and we are going to do the neckline and then the arm opening. At this point, we have nice clean seams on the shoulders and down the body. We have our cute little hip slits here. I did not do any finishing along the hip slits. I think this looked fine, but if you wanna do like a quick single crochet along the hip slits just to make this nice and even, that is definitely your prerogative. Now I've turned this right side out, so this is the actual front and this is the actual back of the project. What we want to do next is find about the center of the neck here, and we'll want to grab our six and a half millimeter hook, insert our hook into the stitch that's in the center, grab the yarn that, of course, the same yarn as um, whatever your project is, and we're going to want to pull up a loop in that space. Chain one, and now we want to work a single crochet stitch in the same space that we just did a chain one in and in each stitch along the project. So not just in the extended single crochets, but in the chain spaces as well. So we're going to work into the next chain space and the next extended single crochet. and continue that around. And when we get to that point, we'll wanna work loosely into the ends of the stitches. So this is where we did the neck shaping. So these are actually sides of stitches. So we'll just kind of wanna work evenly into the sides of those stitches. There isn't really a certain number of stitches you should do there just make sure that the single crochets don't bunch up in that area. And now we're on to the front and we're gonna continue working single crochet stitches around the neckline here. So we're on the back again and I'm working evenly around those two rows of neck shaping and I'm very close back to the center where I started. And once you make it there, which is where we are now, we're going to put a slip stitch in the first single crochet that we made. So slip stitch right here. Now for the second row of the neck, we're going to chain one, 
we're going to put a slip stitch in the same place that we made our slip stitch and we are going to slip stitch in each single crochet around. I encourage you to do these slip stitches fairly loosely so you don't have any weird tightness around the neckline. So we're inserting into the stitch, pulling up a loop and pulling through the loop that's on the hook. So we're back at the beginning of that slip stitch round. I've got one more slip stitch here and then I'm going to put a slip stitch in the first slip stitch of the round. Mm, we'll put it here. <laughs> that feels fine. This is not an exact science and you can fudge things if you need to. So I'm going to snip this here and we'll need to sew in these ends. The last thing we'll want to do on our summertime tee is put a couple rows of single crochet around the arm opening. I like to do that just to make that edge look a little bit more finished. Um, so just like we put a couple stitches around the neckline, we're going to put a few stitches around the arm opening. So I'm just going to show you on this one sleeve here, we're going to grab our six and a half millimeter hook again, and we're going to insert our hook to the stitch just left of the bottom seam of the sleeve. So if this is the sleeve here, I'm inserting my hook right down here. And again, we're working in two ends of rows, so you'll just want to work as evenly as you can. Don't worry about making this exact or having an exact stitch count. So we'll want to yarn over, pull up a loop, chain one, and I want to work a single crochet into the same space where I chained one just now and work evenly around the sleeve. This is not a science. Just work single crochets wherever it feels most comfortable for you. And we're working this with the right side facing. So these single crochets are on the correct side on the right side of the work, not on the wrong side going to put one more single crochet right here. That feels right to me. Okay. Next up, we are going to, instead of doing any kind of join, we're just going to continue to work in a spiral from here. So we're going to put a single crochet in the first single crochet of the round and a single crochet in each stitch around until we get back to the seam. So we are nearly there. Just a couple more stitches. And again, I'm just kind of eyeballing this. Um, so I'm going to do one more single crochet and that's the bottom of the seam. So I'm actually just going to put a slip stitch to end the round here. I'm going to pull that loop up nice and high. I'm going to cut that yarn, pull that loop out, and then I will sew in these ends. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other side of my work. Alrighty friends, I am all done. This is my funny little sample. Again, as you saw from the photos that I put at the beginning of this video, your summertime tea will look much different from this, but I hope this video helped you with some of the techniques that you'll need to know to complete this super fun project. Stick around for a quick announcement. Hey babes, thanks so much for hanging out with me and making the summertime tea. I have to send a special shout out to my friends at Joanne for inspiring and sponsoring this project. Read more about my design process and how this project came together on my blog, tlycblog.com. You can also find a print-friendly version of this pattern on my website, tlyarncrafts.com. Now, before you go, I've just got to know, what are some of your favorite summertime crochet and knit projects? Leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to respond to those. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and I will see you next time. Hey babes, Tony here. I hope you're enjoying this tutorial for the summertime tea. If so, make sure you like my video. Tutorials, patterns, product releases. Tutorials, patterns, product releases. So make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Shit.